So um, Chris is going to talk about testing. So thanks, Chris, for asking. Sure. So um, this is going to be fairly extemporaneous, as you can see here on my slides. They're pretty fancy. Um, mainly, we're just going to dive in and look at code. But um, I thought I'd start by seeing where people are at with this topic. Um, how many people uh, are have done any kind of test driving of their JavaScript code? Show of hands. So that's pretty good. How many people are test driving their Angular code now? So <laughs> somewhat, some hands half raised. So like, um, feel free to jump in with your experience as we go through this. Ask me any questions. This, this should be like an open discussion. Um, so there are um, a lot of different kind of um, ways to organize your code and test with Angular. So I'm going to show like three different projects. And they all kind of have slightly different approaches for where the tests live and how they run. And we'll kind of look at those as well. Um, but the main thing I wanted to kind of show is how to test each piece of Angular as we go. Um, so I've tried to cover most of them. But if I've missed something, just ask, and we'll see if we can go find that. Um, the first thing we're going to look at is actually the phone cat example from the Angular tutorial. It ships with some tests, and uh, we'll take a look at those, and I'll kind of talk about some issues that I ran into getting those to run. If you've played with that lately, it's not as easy as it should be just to, you know, get those tests running. Um, but let's start with uh, controllers. Um, I assume everybody's familiar with the basic pieces of Angular, but if we need to dive in and talk about those, that's fine too. Just jump in and ask questions. Um, what we'll do is let's start with um, the PhoneCat uh, project, and we'll just jump to step two of that project and look at like the very simplest controller test. Um, so let's do that. I need to go get to that point in the app, so bear with me here for one second. <coughs> so one of the first things, if you just grab um, the uh, if you just grab the PhoneCat project and follow the instructions there on the web page, uh, Karma doesn't actually work right now out of the box, which is really a big bummer. So like if you pull this and check out a given step, the first thing that you're going to have to do is change your Karma config. Uh, so let's look at what that looks like real quick. So right now, um, if you pull Angular phone cap in the config directory, there's a karma.conf.js file. That is completely wrong. So let's get the correct version of that first. And I have it. Um, in my stash, so basically with each checkout, I just have to do git stash apply. And then that pulls a version of karma.conf.js that is correct. And if you look in the, I'll post this as an additional file on my GIS, GIS that has my slides, but I just stole this directly from a comment farther on down the page if you're reading that tutorial. So it's not really very hard to find this. I just thought I'd point this out in case you actually try to go run these tests and get frustrated. There is um, the Karma config is out of date. So uh, Karma is um, the test runner that um, the PhoneCat project uses out of the box. It used to be called Testacular, and they changed it to Karma. Um, it's kind of interesting. It will um, figure out, you know, I've got Chrome running. It will connect to Chrome and automatically monitor, monitor and run my tests. So let's see what that looks like. And actually, that might already be running here. Yeah, I have it already running in the background. So let's stop it and start it again to see what that looks like. So um, it, it uses Node. It's a, um, a Node package. So um, if you got how many people are, are working with Node already? So a few people. Um, so if you're not running Node, I think Karma is probably pretty difficult to use. But the underlying test frameworks don't depend on Karma. Karma is just 
a plugin to be able to run them and monitor them. Um, one thing that uh, I don't do a lot of Node, and my system Node was messed up, so just to put a plugin for NVM, the Node version manager, if you're doing stuff with Node, NVM uh, totally saved my bacon. I was able to install NVM, NVM install 010 of Node, and things were good again. So just a little plug there for Node, or for NVM, excuse me. So when I start up Karma, it goes over and highlights Chrome because it's connected. It's figured out that Chrome's running, and it's used Chrome to run my tests. And you'll see that. It'll say starting browser Chrome, and it'll see executed one of one success. So that means it ran one, it found and ran one test. So let's look at the test that it ran. And that will be in the PhoneCap project. You'll see a test folder. And in the unit subdirectory, the test that it's running is the controller spec. So um, let's look at what's in controllers right now, and then we'll talk about how to test it. It's very, very simple, as you can see there. There's a phone list controller that basically just sets a list of objects onto the scope. Doesn't do very much at all. And then if we actually look at the app itself, which is also worth doing, let's make sure I'm up and running here. All right. Let's go see what it does. It's at localhost 8000. Oops. So doesn't do very much at all. It just lists out those phones. And so um, it's very simple. But right now, all we want to do is test that our controller does what it's supposed to do. It puts those phones on the scope. So we're using Jasmine here. Um, I use Mocha on my projects, but they're very, very similar. For our purposes, the distinctions are really all, not all that important. Um, you start with the describe function in your test. You give it sort of a description of what you're testing, and then the second argument to it is a function. You can have nested describes, as you see here. It's not really worth it for this particular test to have nested describes, but the action here is going on in the it block here. It is also a function that takes a label and another function of what to do. And you see here, we're just creating a scope, and then we're just instantiating our controller directly. So this is the simplest possible way to test your controllers. They're just functions. You can just instantiate them with new like you can any other JavaScript class function, so to speak. And it will do what it's supposed to do to scope. And so the first thing to get your head around, if you're used to testing in other frameworks, testing controllers is a little bit odd because w what you're usually doing is you're instantiating the controller and passing it a scope and then you're testing things on the scope. It's just, uh, it was a little bit different for me to get used to when I came to Angular, but that's usually how things work. You pass in a scope and then you check that the scope has the right things on it or behaves in the right way a lot of the time. So in this case, since all that controller does is stick phones on the scope, we basically just say we expect the scope phone's length to be 3. And we can see already that that passed. But if we change it to be incorrect and save it, Karma should be watching this file. And if we go look over here, it should say that it failed. So by the time we tab back over there, it's already like rerun the test automatically. And that's kind of awesome. Expected 3 to be 2. So that gives us a pretty good feeling for what's wrong. It tells us exactly where the error was in the trace. Um, so that's good enough for, the, for our purposes here. We can tell what went wrong and fix it. Um, one thing that I have seen with Karma that I haven't been so thrilled with, and maybe it's just because I don't know how to use Karma very well, I haven't found an easy way to get to the Jasmine Runner UI in Chrome and be able to poke around. I don't know if that's just some secret sauce that I'm missing 
but to run it in the browser. So here's what I tried to do, and maybe maybe it'll work this time. And it looks to me like I should be be able to do that <coughs> and go hit it directly, yeah. and I can see it running. I would have hoped so, but this is what I actually get. The blank white screen of helpfulness. <laughs> so. You want to try that? So let's have the console open here. And then you're saying if I just do. Let's debugger right here. So this is what I. Awesome. OK. So let's con that's a really good idea. So if we wanted to figure out what was going on, we might very well debugger here, too. So any of it, we can step over here, and we can actually poke around at our scope. We can see the scope dot phones. So yeah, this seems like basically what I'd want to do. So this is probably a good enough approach for working with Karma. So thanks for that. Audience participation works. That's awesome. Um, so I'll show another tool in a second that makes that made it a lot easier to actually get to the underlying Jasmine UI. Um, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. So this was like the world's simplest controller spec. Um, now let's look at one that's a little bit more interesting. Um, so this is good as far as it goes, but a lot of times you also want to test controllers that have some services and things injected into them, and there's some interaction between the controller and the different services that you're handed. And of course, the question is, how do we do that? Uh, in a test environment. And Angular gives us some really good help there in the form of the Angular mocks library. And if you haven't seen that, definitely, definitely check that out because it will let you do injection inside of your tests, which is really, really nice and a lot of times really necessary because when writing unit tests, you really want to test things in isolation. You don't want to have to, you know, have a test that tests every little piece because it's all kind of stuck together in one big mess. You want to test each piece by itself and uh, we'll look at mocking the dependencies that you have because a lot of times that's a good way to have isolation in your tests. But let's jump in and see that. Um, there's an example of that in step five of the, um, of the phone cat tutorial. So let's go to step five. And again, I have to stash apply for things to actually work. And now we'll say there's two tests that have run. And let's actually run the app again as well, because that's interesting to do. We'll bop over and look at our app as it is in step five. So there's a lot more going on here. <laughs> what we have is the ability to search and we can say, well, I'm interested in Motorola specifically, or I want to see things alphabetically sorted instead of whatever the defaults, instead of newest. So a lot more going on here. So a lot more to test, of course, as well. So let's take a look at that controller spec in this version of the app. Well, let's start with the controller, because it'll make more sense. Um, it's still, there's not a lot of code here, so that's still pretty awesome. Um, but one of the things that's interesting here is this actually going out and making an HTTP call to get the data for the phones. And of course, um, right away as you're testing it, the first question is, well, how am I going to deal with that? I don't really want to have to have an external service sitting there to handle the HTTP request as I'm testing. That becomes very complicated and hard to manage, and, and you just don't want to do that. Uh, when you're unit testing your JavaScript, you should never actually have it go out and make requests. 
It's just, don't do that. It's way more trouble than it's worth. It's no good. Don't do that. So what do we do instead? How do we test this? Um, fortunately, Angular has us covered there. Because of Angular and the way it works with dependency injection, it's just an awesome place to substitute in mocks and unit tests using mocks. And um, not only that, Angular actually provides us some really handy mocks that we need for some of the common services. And one of the mocks that it gives us out of the box is a mock HTTP service. So um, what we can do in our spec, um, bear with me because this looks a little bit complicated, but we'll go through it piece by piece and hopefully it all makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know. Um, but we see our phone controller spec as before. Uh, we're setting up some variables that we need. Again, we're setting up our scope. Now we're actually making a variable for the controller. And then the other important thing we want to keep track of is our HTTP uh, is a variable to hold that HTTP backend dependency. Now, um, what we're doing here before each, if you haven't used Jasmine, before each is just a hook that runs before each of your specs to set things up. Um, you never want specs to interfere with one another, so with each spec you want to kind of establish a clean environment, and before each is where you do that. Um, and in our before each here, the first thing that we're doing is calling inject. Inject is a function that Angular mocks gives us. Um, Angular mocks uh, is just a super awesome feature of Angular that they, they've given you to make unit testing Angular well, really possible. I wouldn't know how to do it any other way. It would be much more difficult. Um, but what it lets us do is actually use the dependency injection of Angular inside of our tests. And we do that by calling the inject and passing in a function that receives dependencies. And here we are getting uh, an HTTP backend handed to us. And right off the top of my head, those underscores. I don't think those are metrics. So I, they, are. I think that's yeah. they are to receive a mock. Is that yeah. what's going on there? Okay, so, well, let's do an experiment because live coding is fun. So those underscores are like freaking me out and I don't like them. <laughs> what if I just did this? This is how I would normally write the test. A lot of times I, I use this to keep track of things where I want to have the scope available somewhere else. I would do something like that. But in any event... If I do it this way, yeah. So I feel like having it be without the dollar is significant enough to me that I can figure out what's going on. But tomato, tomato, I suppose. Anyway, it still works. Thanks for that. Double audience participation win for those keeping score. Um, anyway, continuing on with what I was talking about, um, the point here is this inject function lets me get the dependencies and I get and I have an HTTP backend that's a mock HTTP uh, service. And um, how it works is you can issue um, expectations um, on your backend. I'm not going to go through the whole HTTP backend API, but it's well documented in the Angular documentation, so please go out and look at that later. Um, but what we're saying here is we expect the HTTP backend to receive a GET request with this URL, and when it does, this is the way it should respond. And then we just pass it the data that we that we would normally that we want to have it pretend came back from the server, um, so we can test the behavior of our controller in different situations, getting different data back. If we wanted to, we could you know have a response that contains invalid data or an error or all kinds of different things. 
So it lets us thoroughly exercise our code, but not actually have a HTTP service up and running. Um, so we issue the expectation. Um, we, we are creating our scope differently now. We're actually um, using this root scope that's injected and telling it to create a new scope. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm still wondering if I could get away with a simple scope that was just a plain old JavaScript object here. I'm, I'm not actually sure of that. Um, but uh, another important bit here is rather than just newing up our controller, we're using this controller service, passing in our function, and overriding some dependencies here. We're telling it this is, this is the scope that um, that for the purposes of this test we want to have injected. So dollar sign scope here is going to be this scope over here. Um, so in our tests, we're testing that um, we should have two phones if we get a response like this over HTTP. Um, we start the test by expecting that there aren't any phones to start with. And then HTTP backend.flush basically is what tells it to finish the HTTP request. So it's a, one of the things that's going on here is HTTP is asynchronous. So um, that takes a little bit of getting used to in a test. I found it really kind of mind-bending the first time I had to write a test that mocked HTTP to think about the ordering of how things happen. But what this is saying is force the request that would normally be asynchronous to be synchronous, like finish up the HTTP request. And when it does, at that time, um, the scope.phones will be um, set up to actually have that data in it. So basically, it's um, by saying HTTP flush, it will trigger this success handler of the HTTP response, grab that data, and set it on the scope. So we're testing that the right things happen. Um, granted, this is very simple code, but it gives you an idea for how to test stuff that is probably going to be more complicated in a real app. So any questions on this? This is probably some of the more complicated bits from my point of view. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it, I, I, don't, I don't know if you were saying it, but as far as the test driving the, um, the, the, the controller that was listed here, I think a lot of folks raised their hand when they said they were all doing that. Mm -hmm. And one of the challenges that I find, you know, coming out on a JavaScript side as opposed to something that's statically typed in the Java world where my IDE, I, I, I can do all my code complete, my IDE can kind of finish everything, and then I can basically quick fix quick fix the, the design of the app into it, if you, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. On this side, I, I've, I, I've struggled with this, coming at it from the test and then driving it back into the, the actual object. And I'm curious what other people's, um, how, how they've done it, if they've done, if there are other tips and tricks that they learned. For example, the, uh, so right so, now, I mean, so I will see before like each <coughs> inject and then the, the expect get if you don't know the api i mean you're just kind of well i mean there's a I, lot of there's a lot of i, I guess I would, screen a couple of things i would say is yeah. if i'm brand new to a framework like angular or ember i need to spike with it and yeah. i need to write some you code play, yeah, well enough to actually understand the framework understand, understand. and i can't really test first if i have no idea what i'm doing yet it's like I have to spike a little bit, learn the framework well enough, and then once I do, I have an idea for what are the pieces and how do they fit together, and what should a given individual piece do. And at that point, hopefully I know enough to say, okay, I'm building this controller, I know what a controller does, and I, I know it's going to make, I know in this controller that I'm going to want to make a GET request to fetch my data. And from that point, it's just a matter of like learning how do I work with the HTTP mock to say, pretend this data came back. Yeah. And yeah. once, and then it's just a matter of learning the APIs to be able to do that. Um, I don't know if that yeah. helps. Perspective. Think of it like the before each is like defining the interface. You're, de you're defining the dependency that you know your controller's going to be ahead of time. 
Oh, this is the setup, right? Yeah. yeah. It's all the setup. I understand. Yeah. I understand. And then, and then the type. I, I understand the, lay, the layout yeah. of the, the test. Yeah. The, describing the suite, it being each one of the tests <laughs> inside. I, I, I'm totally familiar with that. Yeah. I'm just talking about the driving of it backward because once you get to this state, you're like, okay. And, and, it, and the spiking, I understand. Um, I think probably like maybe let's follow up with this yeah, yeah, well, later. Yeah, I'm just curious what other people had done. Yeah. Does anybody else have any thoughts on that before I move on? Huh? Use Makito. I use Makito all the time. Yeah. To me, it's it's very fluid. It's fluent, but it's the same setup you want to expect as your. Yeah, but it's not the question. Uh, yeah, it's not a testing issue. It's okay. Not a testing okay. issues more the angular side of things. It's not necessarily a test. It's understanding what the what all the harnesses are for the tests of something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, but I went to but, the Makita too. Right? So yeah, for a while. Right. Yeah. I, I think maybe we're not answering your question, but I feel like no, we're getting no, no, a little no, bogged no, down. Yeah, so we're good, we're good. I'd like to keep it moving a little bit. Um, so that kind of gives a feel for how we test controllers. Let's look at um, factories and services next. Um, <laughs> And for that, I'm going to look at some of the code that we actually have in our app. Um, this is like quite a bit more going on, but um, what we have in our app is we've actually, um, and this is actually some of Kevin's code that I'm showing, so he can jump in and yell at me if I get it wrong. But um, what we have is we're actually, uh, we actually had a, a class that we built, uh, or that Kevin built called Resource Collection, which uh, manages a collection of resources and provides some helpful things to be able to work with those models. So it's really kind of bringing some stuff, uh, it's, it's kind of porting some stuff from Backbone, it looks like originally, in terms of being able to say, okay, I want to fetch all of a given type of model and then work with that collection. Um, so let's look at what we have going on in that class. So we can see that this guy is a factory, and he gets. Yeah, that's right. So if I'm, yeah, sorry. If I'm, um, if if there's some questions about the syntax of CoffeeScript, please jump in. I'm I'm happy to explain that. But the biggest thing is every everywhere you see an arrow, that means function. Yeah. And class is really just setting up the JavaScript prototype chain under the covers. It's still prototypal inheritance, it's just kind of a thin veneer over top of it. Um, imagine that you were just saying resource.collection.prototype.add equals this function over here. Um, so what I'm doing here is I have this resource collection class um, that manages a collection and I'm wanting to test that it does the right thing. Um, I have a bunch of methods from underscore that it just kind of brings over by just plunking them on there and calling apply so that you have your scope correctly set up. And then let's take a look at that. So let's take a look at the constructor here. Again, we're making use of the injector from Angular mocks. We're having an inject our resource collection using the same factory that we declared over here. And then once we have that guy, we can just make one and add a model to it. And then we're just saying that we expect it to be there. Uh, one thing that we're also test testing is that um, resource is basically the type of the model that we're managing. So normally this would be a model class um, function. And we're just saying that we expect it to have been called with whatever is passed into the constructor for resource collection. So yeah, I'm not sure I understand what this is doing. Says 
tends to be a mix of both because it's the full range out there. But um, so every every time we just add a new model to this collection, I want to new up a resource and pass in whatever. whatever oh, okay. So you're pretending you just added like a yeah, blob of data. Be, so yeah. So if we added data, we expect it to like wrap it in a model class to pass that into the yeah. constructor of the model itself. And that's what we're testing. OK, that makes sense. Thanks. So we've got mo more going on here. Um, here's another example where we're actually doing so some So, so here we're actually stubbing out one of the services, one of the, the models itself. So we're saying that the save, we're stubbing out the save method of our model. And we're saying that when we create a new thing, it should call save on the underlying model. So in our app, uh, we've been running things is actually using another kind of runner called Konacha. And I'm not going to run all of our specs. Let's just run resource collection. So um, Konacha is a really nice test runner. Um, it gives you some nice output. I can go and click and run individual specs really easy. Um, the other nice thing about Konacha is it runs each test in its own iframe. So if you are doing stuff in your test that manipulates the DOM, uh, you can do that safely and it will clean everything up after each test. That can be really awesome. Um, I haven't seen that be as important in Angular for whatever reason, but it's definitely a handy, handy feature. Um, so that kind of gives you a feel for how you can unit test a factory or service. It's actually really easy. Factories and services are just JavaScript, and there's not really any. Uh, once you use the injector from Angular Mox, there's really not that much more going on. Um, so the reason it's nice to use the injector is you're actually using the code the same way that Angular would. So you're testing that everything's like wired up correctly. Um, I think for that particular spec, other than the dependencies, I don't know that there's a lot to be gained. Uh, you know, if you had some other way to get to that resource collection, that would be fine. But the other thing is, I'm not sure that's exposed as a global. In fact, I don't think it is. I don't know if there's another way to get to that guy because I'm, I'm, because I didn't put this like available as a global anywhere. It's basically like inside that function that's essentially private. Yeah, so the sure only way to really get to that. Just a helper method to pull out services and factories and whatever, whatever else you define underneath your Angular. Uh, I guess the other thing, the other thing that's important to point out that I. I uh, failed to mention. It actually pulls them out of like the Angular, underlying Angular container that Angular manages all of your classes. Yeah. The other important bit when you're doing your tests, Angular Mox also gives you a module helper. And if you're setting up your app inside of a module, which is a really good idea, you want to make sure that you have a before each that puts you in the right module before you try to use inject. Otherwise, you'll be really sad and frustrated like I was. For <laughs> yes, it's happened more than once, sadly. But eventually, we learn. So um, I think I'll, I'll show one more thing in this app that we've been working on. Um, and then we'll go look at another setup entirely, which is called Lineman. Um, so one of the trickier things, I think, to test can be directives. And I thought it might be worth showing how we're testing one of our directives. So our app does some, uh, 
it does some client side uploading, um, some, some file upload, and there's a super awesome ng upload library that uh, directive that we used to make that happen, but we did some extra stuff. We had a modal that didn't upload, and so we ended up doing that several times and wrote our own upload modal directive. And uh, so we wanted to test drive that, and test driving a directive was, was kind of interesting. Um, I thought I'd show the directive itself first. Um, it has its own controller. It has an upload modal controller. And, um, and then really not a lot else. Um, you're passing in an upload action, what you want to do on upload, essentially, and a couple other parameters. But what we actually want to test is that that directive actually works and actually puts stuff into the page when you use it. And so testing all that stuff wired together was tricky. And I, I mostly borrowed this code from elsewhere. Um, but again, we're setting our module. We're injecting. But one of the things that we're injecting now is the compile service. And the compile service is what lets us evaluate uh, an Angular template on the fly that references or that uses our directive that we made. And so here's where we do it. We call Angular, well, I'm sorry. Here's where we're actually setting things up. We're basically saying, OK, if you had a bit of markup in an Angular template that used this upload modal directive, and then you compile it using the compile service here, at that point, you expect it to actually pick up this directive and, and do the right thing with it. Um, so here I'm saying I have an upload modal controller. Um, I'm, so that compile service actually returns a function. So it's like a function that makes a function. And that function itself, I invoke with the scope that I want it to have when it's processing this directive. So it's a little bit mind bending. And then I have to call scope.digest here at the end to make all the Angular watching code fire. Um, so the point of all this is what I want to do is say that there should have been an element uh, put inside of this upload modal with a class of upload. So if I go look at my template, and that's probably worth talking about too. I'm basically just testing that everything got wired together and it did, in fact, uh, end up with this code inside of it. So I have an anchor with class upload, and that causes it to actually satisfy that test. Um, one of the other things that I found interesting about directives is um, actually testing this template. So I'm doing something a little bit unusual here. Rather than having Angular load the template for me by fetching it over HTTP, like using a template URL, I'm actually having my template compiled server side by uh, Rails in this case. But if you pass template a function rather than just a plain old string, it turns out that actually works OK. It'll just invoke that function and then do the rest of the Angular magic on what's returned by that function. So in this case, that lets me use my server side compiled template over here and do my tests against it. So definitely, I found testing directives probably more complicated than testing other sides of other kinds of things in Angular. Um, did that make any sense at all? <laughs> Can I answer some questions on that? I feel like it's pretty hairy, but maybe it's not for you guys. OK, cool. <laughs> Good. Well, 
I found it super confusing when I first looked at it, I'm just saying. But now that I know how to test them, I, I really do like being able to unit test my directives the, rest, the way I do the rest of the code. It made me really happy. Um, so uh, oh, we're kind of running close on time. So um, I don't know if, do people want to see the end-to-end -end test runner or um, I guess a quick plug. Before I, I go on, I do want to show um, the setup that um, Test Double, uh, Justin Searles up in Columbus, and his crew came up with this thing called Lineman, which is um, kind of a way to get really up and running quickly with client-side application. If you're building an application that's just a client-side application, it's a really quick way to get up and running. And they're kind of advocating the approach of build your client-side app and build your server-side app and have them be kind of separated. And uh, Lineman is a tool to make that really easy, easy. And it also has a really nice template for working with Lineman and Angular together that includes examples of all of the kinds of tests that you can possibly want to write with Angular. So really awesome stuff. Um, Highly encourage you to guys to check that out. Dave Mosher, yes. I'll drop that in the gist as well. Um, so I need to add, yeah, I th there's something else I said I'd add to the gist. Somebody help me remember. Karma the Karma config, yep. Karma config and a link to Dave Mosher's stuff. But let's see what it looks like in action. Um, so I'm going to stop my thing over here, and okay. So lineman, uh, I've basically cloned a repo here, and I say lineman run to actually run a node instance that's serving my app. And let's take a look at what we have going on here. We have a really simple app here where we can try to log in. I'm just logging in. I can mouse over direct. I have a directive here that's doing something on mouse over and changing the caption over here based on what I have going on. I can log back out. So really simple little trivial app. Um, but uh, as well as showing you how to work with Lineman and Angular, like I said, it's got really nice example specs going on. Um, so, what's that? So, this is also using another um, project that I really like. Uh, it's a uh, extension to Jasmine that gives me a given when then style syntax. Uh, if you've used Cucumber or if you've used RSpec given, you might have seen this syntax, but the, the thing I like about it is it kind of organize my, it organizes my tests into what are my preconditions, what am I actually testing, and what are my expectations. Given I have such and such a situation, when I do such and such, then something interesting happens. And so it gives me a, a nice hook to pe put each piece. Uh, what I used to find is when I was writing tests without this kind of a structure, I'd have a big long test method that was like doing something over here, and then doing something down here, and then doing something down here, and I had to read it to figure out what each piece was. And given when then is a nice kind of way to organize things. So um, given is really doing the same thing as before each under the covers. Um, it's, it's just kind of a little bit of, of nice syntax. It's not doing anything too complicated, but what's, this? what's that? This is uh, Jasmine given is what actually adds these given hooks to Jasmine. So given I'm in the module app, given that I inject HTTP and authentication service, which is the thing I'm testing. Uh, and then he's doing, he's also mocking out HTTP. He's just doing it a little bit differently. He's actually saying that I want to spy on the post request and the get request. 
And he's saying, given these credentials, when I call login on my authentication service, I expect it to make a post out to my slash login URL passing these credentials. And the same thing with when it gets to log out, I expect it to call log out. So that service doesn't really do a whole lot, so there's not a whole lot going on here, but it's kind of another take on testing an external service. Um, so yeah, lineman's, oh, and the runner for lineman is also nice. I really dig it. Um, so I have lineman run going on in one window, and I start lineman spec in another window. And lineman spec uses testum, which is yet another uh, multi-browser test runner, similar to Karma, but allegedly better. And the thing I, yeah, it's really easy to add more browsers and have it automatically run your tests in those browsers. The other thing that I really definitely dig about it is it's really easy to actually get to Jasmine itself running my tests, as you can see. I just hit that URL, and I see my tests actually running in the browser. So, um, yeah, I, I think I dig test them. It seems pretty nice compared to Karma so far, I would have to say. Um, so I'm, I'm a little bit over. Uh, I didn't get to talk about end-to-end -end testing. Um, do people want me to keep going or stop? Well, I'll go quick. Uh, let's see. There is. And here are the scenarios, so good call. So what I don't know is actually how to run that. Let's see if I can find that real quick. I'm not sure of anything. Let's see if I can I don't these look all these all look like unit tests. There's got to be another command to run my end to end lineman e to e e to e testing support and that seems promising yeah well let's see <laughs> let's find out oh there he is <laughs> Eating lunch, probably. He wah, 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 wah. Yeah, he, he, he is a machine. <laughs> he does also require food. I wonder if I can. Let's see if it happens to it. No. I was hoping that would run it, but it doesn't look like it will. Well, I can show you. Um, I can show you it running inside of uh, the phone cat example. Yeah. Let's just look at that real quick, just so I can cover all the bases. I'm going to have to stop, test them, and or lineman. Sorry. If I run web server, let's go look at. Oh, and I was looking in the wrong place anyway. So these are the scenarios from the phone cat example already. I was in the wrong window. So what it's saying here, uh, what end-to-end -end test runner gives you is kind of running the app uh, as if you were a browser. So you're testing it. That's what they mean by end-to-end. -end. You're actually saying, okay, if the user clicked here, I expect such and such to appear on the screen. 
Whereas unit tests are testing, does my controller do the right thing? Does my directive do the right thing? Does my service do the right thing? End-to-end -end testing is saying, does my app all fit together and work right? Uh, we use Cucumber uh, for our apps that we're building in Rails. Uh, this is kind of another approach to just testing that all the Angular pieces fit together. And, you know, it's pretty interesting. So uh, it's basically starting by saying if I'm a web browser and I navigate to this page, I expect that there's a ng repeat for this matching this particular um, selector, and I expect its count to be 20. So basically, there are in a phones element, there are 20 list items. And it's saying if I change, if I actually go into the query input and enter Nexus, and that should do that whole um, thing we saw earlier where it's kind of dynamically filtering that list, it should filter down to just one element. And if there's Motorola, it should be eight. So let's actually see that run. Um, ah, sorry about that. So I can reload this guy, and it actually is running those things. I can look and see exactly what it's doing going on under the covers. So, so pretty awesome. There is a way to run these things headlessly. I'm actually just showing it in the UI as an easy way to get to it. But yeah, Karma does provide the hooks to run that thing headlessly as well, I believe. Well, I mean, I could see it actually. It's, there's yeah, stuff yeah, going on in there. I do not know. I'm guessing an iframe, but I have no idea. I mean, I saw some stuff going on there. Looks like it's making an iframe and actually doing the deal. Uh, and there's a new thing. So Karma is like the kind of the older thing. They're making a new one called Protractor, which uses Selenium, I think, under the covers. I don't know why they decided to do that. What's that? Okay. Is anybody using end-to-end -end testing in the wild? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so why why aren't you up here talking about it instead of me? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so sad. All right. Well, we're over time, and that's all I have to say about that. Oh. I don't know. I haven't used Yaman. <laughs> right back at you. <laughs> I didn't see. I didn't. So I when I Googled for you know Yaman template that did uh, Jasmine and specs and stuff, I didn't see anything. Whereas I knew Lineman had that totally covered and was like cool. So where is my, there's my slides, edit my gist, Dave Mosier's example, blah, bang. So I'll post this gist. He has some videos too. He references, he references the video. If you go to that page with, with the setup, <coughs> he references his testing strategies for Angular video down here which is like an hour long and totally worth watching. Very cool stuff. And uh, I'll go ahead and add that um, just as well, or the um, my Konacha thing that I said I would add another file. Konacha config.js. Oh, karma conf.js. Sorry. Ah, 
All right. And then we'll post that to the. Do you have a Google group for this thing or what? What is that? Angular Cincy? Uh, okay, I'll do it later. I'll do it later while people aren't watching. But anyway, <laughs> thanks everybody. Thank I'm going to stop.